So what's the overview of the President Biden executive order? What do you need to know? This is going to be a very quick hit moving through the actual White House document. Guys, let's do this. The president is going to continue the fight for common sense gun safety legislation, and there are all sorts of pieces of legislation we need. But in the meantime, the president wants the federal government to be doing all that we can with existing authority to reduce gun violence. And that is what this executive order does. Those are not my words. Those are the words of a White House official who was publicizing and going into the president's executive order. So what's covered in the executive order? We're gonna quickly go through almost all of it. There's gonna be a few kind of obscure things we're gonna be leaving out, but I really wanna pay your attention to the big hits. The first and largest and most important one that you need to know deals with background checks. President Biden has ordered a Attorney General Merrick Garland to clarify who is engaged in the business of dealing firearms. Now, importantly, this is a statutory definition. Here's what you need to know, though. What you need to know is, are you going to be a gun dealer when you sell a firearm, whether in person, online, or whatever else? How many transactions do you need to sell in a year before you actually hit that threshold? What types of guns might it apply to more than others? Does the price that you bought and sold at, as well as the amount of time between the purchase and the sale, does that all matter? Short answer, yes. And kind of like when you file your taxes and the IRS knows the number that you need to hit, and you somehow have to figure it out and divine that number. It's the same thing here. If you get it wrong, prison, penalties, all that kind of stuff. Because by the way, if you need to be a gun dealer, you need to get a federal firearms license, which if you are dealing guns without one, five-year prison sentence, hundreds of thousand dollars in fines. So you want to get that one right. So what we're going to see here is a reenactment of the pistol brace issue, of the bump stock issue, all that, where the statutes themselves are not changing. But President Biden has asked the Department of Justice to basically clarify. That's code for move the goalposts and to expand and to do everything possible to push out there and to get aggressive the definition of who is engaged in the business of firearm sales. The next big thing that you need to know about is the extreme risk. We're talking red flag laws. As of 2023, they've been enacted in 19 different states and the president of the United States want us to see them used more. For those of you who may not know, red flag laws basically enable law enforcement and so-called, as the White House put it, trusted members of the community to petition to have judges strip you of your Second Amendment rights with very limited to hardly any due process whatsoever. Pretty ugly 1984 style stuff here. The next big thing to talk about is the so-called effort to hold the gun industry quote unquote accountable. What are we talking about here? Two sub points. Number one, the president is directing the attorney general to publicly release to the fullest extent permissible by law ATF records from the inspection of firearms dealers cited for violation of federal firearm laws. So we'll have to see where this one goes, but in case you were unaware, periodically ATF agents go in and basically audit the books, bound books, and the records and so forth of federal firearms licensed dealers. It seems like what we're talking about here is kind of like how local municipal agents may kind of publish a grade or something like that on restaurants when they find cockroaches. Is that kind of where this is going to be going? I don't know. And we'll have to see kind of how this all plays together with the laws because there's a lot of privacy issues implied here. But again, we're going to have to really see how this plays out because this is extraordinarily vague right now. The second sub point, President Biden is also encouraging the Independent Federal Trade Commission, that is the FTC, to issue a public report analyzing how gun manufacturers market firearms to minors and how such manufacturers market firearms to all civilians, including through the use of military imagery. So does that mean that one of the gun control efforts here is going to be to do to the Second Amendment what a lot of folks did to, of course, the cigarettes market, which in Incidentally, unrelated to the topic of this video, but if you want to see this, let us know in the comment field below. An increasing legal strategy to attack the Second Amendment is to treat Second Amendment issues like they are public nuisance laws. And this really seems to be related from that and to kind of spawn from the same principles, if you will, of looking at, look, how are things marketed? We're going to try to hem in as much kind of issues on that and to put as many barriers up as possible to restrain the market. Well, to see where this winds up going, but I think we all know that they're going to be trying to do everything possible to basically squash the voice of the Second Amendment community. The next issue is to drive law enforcement officer efforts to identify and apprehend shooters. 
And this one, I gotta say, I'm okay with, at least the way that it's worded. Now, this sounds great in theory. It's gonna be a little questionable how this works in practice. I know that some law enforcement officers and agencies have credited this with being able to solve sh crimes and shootings, in which case, look, I'm all for it, depending upon where this goes. Until we get out to hindsight and total transparency, it's impossible to say how this is gonna be getting used. What I'm talking about deals with the National Integrated Ballistics Information Network, or the NIBIN. And what the White House said is that today, the president is directing all federal law enforcement agencies to issue rigorous requirements regarding the NIBIN data submission and use of this tool. So what we're talking about here is basically taking a look at all the brass and all the evidence collected from different scenes of different crimes, aggregating them into a database, and hopefully by studying which firearms are being used where, being able to link that up to solve who might be doing what. Uh, speaking as a former state prosecutor, I can look at this and say, great, if we can actually connect this particular firearm to these particular shootings, that may result in additional charges and leverage to get bad guys put away for a long time. So again, we'll have to see where this is actually going, but at least in principle on paper, I'm not immediately reacting adversely to that. So the next issue, and this is one I can definitely get behind, again, subject to the details of how it's being implemented here. Don't go crazy on me, keyboard warriors. It's all going to be in the details. I know that. What the White House said is that in consultation with the Justice Department, President Biden has also directed the Secretary of Transportation to work with carriers and shippers to reduce lost or stolen firearms during shipments. Notably, according to ATF data, by the way, the number of firearms reported as lost or stolen during shipment between federal firearms licensed dealers jumped from roughly 1,700 firearms annually in 2018 to more than 6,100 in 2022. That's an increase of approximately 250% if I'm doing my lawyer math right. So again, in principle, this is something I can get behind. I don't want my property stolen when it's going through the mail. Is there something nefarious? Are firearm dealers or firearm owners being targeted for theft? The answer is probably yes, although frankly, I don't know enough about overall loss rates to know whether or not, if you look at the total number of firearms shipped, that's above or below the average loss rate. Couldn't tell you don't know. In principle, depending upon how this issue is getting resolved, because if they want some sort of registry of every single firearm being shipped all the time, going from place to place, there may be some problems with that. And invariably, that's where this is going to be going, I suspect. This is a problem that's out there, but we need to know more. If you want us to go into this more, let us know in the comment field below. So guys, there's the quick hits roundup. And keep in mind, we actually did a much deeper dive video already linked in the description box below, talking about basically the background checks, where this might be going, and whether or not you may actually be a gun dealer. Depending upon what you want to see more content of, we'd love to stick with this topic. So let us know in the comment field what you want to see more of. And as always, please don't forget to click like, subscribe. We will see you in the next one. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. If you enjoyed this one, please feel free to check out some of our other great content and we'll see you in the next one.